Hello to everybody, this is Alessandro Baixi's Middle East. Is neutrality still an important tenet of corporate foreign policy? Well, to be honest with you, there is no clear and straightforward answer to this question. Neutrality can be defined as the state of not supporting either side in a conflict or a dispute. In the 1950s and 1960s, international companies they acted in a very neo-colonialist way in the countries where they used to do their investments. A good case in point was the behavior of the United Fruit Company, a U.S. corporation that in 1954 participated in a CIA-sponsored coup in Guatemala. This coup ousted the democratically elected president and put the power, uh, put the power in the hands of a military junta that lasted for more than 30 years. Around the 1980s, international companies began to present themselves as neutral players, as apolitical players. They wanted to show that they cared about the societal development of the countries where they used to do their investments. They wanted to have an improved corporate social responsibility, CSR, they wanted to have better relations with the NGOs interested in their activities. And, of course, they wanted to protect their image and reputation. But now there is a question. Uh, are these new promotional tools, let's use this definition. So are these new promotional tools and the neutral approach sufficient to protect the international companies from high impact geopolitical events such as wars, civil wars, power struggles in the countries where they invest, and so on. Well, it seems that the answer to this question is no. Honestly, uh, today's world, the post-Cold War world, is much more unstable, and these tools and this behavior seems not to be, seem not to be sufficient to protect the companies. And a good example of these difficulties of implementing a neutral approach can be seen with reference to the energy investments in Iraq. With Iraq, I mean uh, Iraq proper and Iraqi Kurdistan as well. So the um, also known as the Kurdistan Regional Government, uh, the KRG. Let's skip this, the history of, you know, just uh, the difficult relations between Erbil and Baghdad. And let's focus our attention on the events after two, in, from 2007 onward. In that year, um, Erbil, the KRG, signed its first production sharing contracts with uh, small, medium-sized uh, energy companies. Of course, you know, um, immediately um, Baghdad, the federal government, denounced those contracts as illegal. Because according to Baghdad, the only authority who has the power to sign petroleum contracts in Iraq, the whole Iraq, so Iraq proper and the Kirji as well, is the uh, federal government. Um, then, just a four years and a half later, in October 2011, ExxonMobil, the U.S. super major, signed a, a contract, a deal, for the exploration of six blocks in uh, the KRG. Well, to be honest with you, just, well, not all these six blocks were exactly in uh, KRG recognized um, territory. Some of, you know, these blocks were in disputed territory, disputed between the KRG and Iraq proper. But anyway, uh, you know, the signature of a deal between the KRG um, and uh, Axon was uh, very um, was problematic for you know the federal government because um, you know if one of the most important energy companies in the world had decided to sign a petroleum contract with the KRG, this means actually that you know it was giving economic legitimacy to um, the petroleum deals of the KRG. But that the federal government denounced also these deal as illegal and at the same time menaced to uh, push Axon Mobil out of a contract that 
the company, the U.S. super major, had previously signed in uh, Iraq proper, um, the West Corona One contract. West Corona One is one of the most important oil fields in, in Iraq proper, in southern Iraq. And there, um, Axon Mobil was um, uh, a shareholder with a 60% share, and at the same time, it was the operator, of course. Uh, after six years, um, Exxon Mobil is still um, um, an investor in both places, in the KRG and in Iraq proper. In, in, in the KRG, it is an investor uh, with reference to three um, oil fields, to three blocks out of the six blocks, uh, but just that uh, it relinquished in December 2016, three blocks, but not as a consequence of Baghdad's pressure. And at the same time, Exxon Mobil is still the operator in West Corona 1, although right now just with a 25% share. So the basic idea here is that just that if you know energy companies they want to do business in um, Iraq, Iraq proper, and the Kirji, they have to decide where to invest. So right now there are just a bunch of small and medium-sized companies that are investing in the KRG. Um, there is also Chevron there, which is, of course, a super major, and Chevron, in effect, doesn't have any investment in Iraq proper. At the same time, there are just the companies, primarily tier one energy companies, that are investing instead in uh, Iraq proper, BP, Shell, and so on. There are only three companies that are investing, that are invest, uh, who are, well, there are investors in both places, the Kyrgy and Iraq proper. These three companies are um, the above-mentioned Axon Mobil, uh, Francis Total, and Russia's Gazprom. But is there, are there any cases when a neutral approach may be still valid and useful? Well, in my opinion, there are two cases when a neutral approach may still be useful. The first one is when in a country there are completely unstable political conditions. Um, let's say there is an ongoing war, a civil war, and so on. And the second case is actually when it is possible that just in a very short time frame there could be a political finals, a final political settlement, a final political solution. In these two cases, it, it is worth refraining from invest, investing for the time being. But do these two cases apply right now just to the present conditions in Iraq? Well, to be honest with you, no. The answer is no. First of all, Erbil and Baghdad, they're not, you know, fighting each other right now. They're talking bad words, they're saying bad words, but they're not fighting. At the same time, both places, they have areas where there are um, hydrocarbons, areas that are easily... Um, that, that can be easily protected, you know, just uh, from the Islamic State's attacks. And then, uh, well, the Kirkuk oil fields is a different story, and Kirkuk could be a problem in the future in the relations between Erbil and Baghdad. But let's say that just uh, the southern fields in Iraq proper, they just uh, can just uh, work very well right now. And at the same time, also, the, the fields in the Kirji could be just uh, well protected and can be exploited. Um, plus, moreover, um, if we if we say just uh, okay, but there are tensions ongoing between Erbil and Baghdad. Is it possible that Baghdad and Erbil could find um, a political settlement, a political solution in a reasonable time frame? Well, also here it seems to, that the answer should be no. Um, so just uh, considering, you know, just. Uh, um, you know, the present conditions. Is it worth just uh, not investing uh, in those two areas for the time being and waiting uh, un un until just Erbil and Baghdad can find just a settlement? Um, well, this could, you know, occur in a year, in two years, three years, uh, five years, ten years. Well, economically speaking, it is absolutely um, something that, you know, it's not useful to the... Um, um, economic targets of energy companies. So the basic idea is that, well, companies have to decide what they want to do, where they want to invest. Another good example 
uh, Reliance Industries, an Indian company uh, that had previously um, uh, purchased the rights to two blocks in the KRG. Well, when the company decided to do some investments in um, uh, Iraq, Iraq proper, the first thing that the company did was to sell its two blocks. Actually, it sold its two blocks to Chevron uh, in order to be free to do business in Iraq proper. Um, and when just uh, we consider also, you know, why Axon Mobil, uh, Francis Total, and Gazprom are investors in both places, so the KRG and, uh, you know, Iraq proper, here there is a clear answer. When the three companies signed their petroleum contracts with the KRG, well, they had previously signed um, some contracts with the uh, Iraq proper with reference to the development of three uh, giant oil fields in southern Iraq. In other words, uh, it was very difficult, um, economically speaking, to, um, for Baghdad to replace these three companies. So that's the reason why actually Still today, these three companies are investors in both places. But probably the company that literally very well explains why energy companies, they have to take a position is Royal Dutch Shell. Let's see why. Royal Dutch Shell uh, was in negotiations with the KRG in the first months of 2011. Exactly, it was part of the negotiations that, you know, at that time, Axon Mobil was conducting with the KRG. But then, just uh, before the signature that actually Axon Mobil uh, did in October 2011, uh, Shell decided to stop its negotiations with the KRG. And there is an answer to this behavior. Um, first of all, um, Shell was... Uh, already investing uh, in uh, in Iraq proper. It was the junior partner to Axon Mobil with reference to the West Kurna 1 oil field, but at the same time, it was the operator and it had a 45% share in the field Mishnun. Mishnun is one, really one of the most important Iraqi oil fields. But, okay, we could say, well, but, you know, Shell had already signed, you know, these two contracts. So, in other way, just that, uh, it could probably, um, it could have probably signed just um, an additional contract with the KRG, and again, it would have been very difficult had you know just uh, Shell signed uh, a contract with the KRG uh, for the um, um, the federal government in Baghdad to push out you know the uh, um, Shell from the 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 West Kurna one and from Mejnoun oil field. Okay, this is true, but there is something more and. Mm, and this is that exactly in 2011, while it was negotiating with the KRG, well, Shell was also in negotiations with Iraq proper. Um, and, and, and actually, in November 2011, um, Shell signed a $17.2 billion contract with the federal government for um, um, collecting and processing natural gas from three of the most important oil fields in Iraq proper in southern Iraq. So this is why Shell had to take a position. So the basic idea just of our uh, discussion is that probably uh, neutrality right now, just uh, with reference to the energy investments in Iraq, Iraq proper and the Kirji doesn't pay off very well. Thank you so much. Bye. Take care.